Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing something really, really cool, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brooke and today, if you can't tell by the title, I am going to be doing a teen mom advice video um, and talk about a whole bunch of different things that I have learned myself. I just went ahead and sat down and came up with a couple of ideas on my own. This might not help everybody, but it does help me. Um, I know people parent different and this is just some of the ideas and advice that I came up with myself. So let's just go ahead and get right into the video. But before we do, make sure to go ahead and subscribe. Also comment down below and like this video. So one of the first things that I have written down is about making money. We all know that it is hard to have a job and also be a full-time mom at the same time and be making a good income. So my advice is to sell things that you don't need or you don't use. I will go ahead and just sell some of my old clothes, some of my old shoes, perfumes, anything that I don't use, any household items, anything that Addison has grown out of. Not so much her clothes because I keep all of her clothes. Um, but maybe some of her toys like there was like a little light projector that she never even used so I went ahead and sold that um, and you just go on to anywhere and you can sell it anywhere you can sell it to your friends sell it on um, Facebook literally you can sell it on anything there's so many apps out there that you can sell things on and that's what I've been doing I have just been selling little things you can sell things for five dollars you can sell things for bigger amounts for hundreds of dollars just anything and it makes you some extra cash I have been selling things on an app on my phone and the app's called Mercari and I have been selling since 2018 in December so about a year now um, just a little bit over a year about a year and a month and I've made over a thousand dollars just by selling things that I don't use that I've grown out of just anything that I basically don't need anymore and we all know that we could use extra cash for whatever for baby for you to buy yourself something special to treat yourself anything we can all use a little bit of extra cash so that is a good way to make some extra money my second piece of advice also has to do a little bit with money on basically how to save money a lot of people comment on how many clothes that Addison does have and how nice they are and honestly they always ask I'll go out to stores and people will be asking where I got her clothes and I will just say that I got them from the thrift store because it is a really good way to get a lot of clothes for really cheap. Um, the thrift stores, there's thousands of thrift stores, different ones in different states. There's so many different stores that you can get clothes from and they're really cheap. Sometimes they're 25 cents for pants, sometimes they're a dollar, but they're always really, really cheap and usually they have really good clothes. I won't just go in and buy a bunch of nasty clothes or anything like that, but there is really cute clothes out there that are really cheap and that's how I have so many clothes that's kind of my little bit of a secret that's how I have so many clothes for Addison and I just go to a bunch of thrift stores um, and get clothes that way and it also saves you a lot of money tip number three is to have two different diaper bags my reasoning is because if you have two diaper bags if you leave one somewhere else then you always have the backup one um, for instance for Christmas my grandpa lives about 50 minutes away from me so I accidentally left Addison's diaper bag there so I had my backup one since I was already all the way home. I didn't want to drive all the way back out there. I just went and got it a couple of weeks later. But I also have my backup diaper bag. So it is a really good idea to have two different diaper bags in case you leave one somewhere. Or if you want to give someone to a grandma or a family relative so they can also have a diaper bag as well. So it's just a really good idea to have two different diaper bags and I pack usually the same amount of stuff in the diaper bags so that if I do leave one somewhere then I still have the same stuff in them. So the fourth tip that I have is going to be keep things that are breakable up high and I know that you guys hear this all the time because I heard it all the time. I hear it from family, everybody, um, but basically <laughs> Actually what happened today was I had like little um, cooking wine, it's not actually alcohol but it's like cooking wine um, sauce and I had three bottles of it sitting way down low next to my stove. Addison, while I was doing dishes, grabbed the bottles, knocked them over and they all spilled everywhere and there was glass all over the floor. So a little tip of advice is keep things up high so they don't break or babies can't reach them because it'd be really bad if she got glass in her fingers. Good thing I was just standing right next to her, so I seen them and I just picked up the glass, put her in her bedroom and cleaned up the mess. But make sure to keep everything that is in their reach up high because once they start crawling, I heard it so many times and I didn't, I mean I believed it, but it's just the fact that She's crawling and she's getting older. She's moving all over the place. So I needed to put the things up higher and I just didn't get around to it yet. Um, so I went ahead and moved it. 
but make sure to move everything before they start crawling because they will get into everything. My fifth tip that I have for you guys is about your emotions after you have the baby. I know that while you're pregnant, everybody says like, oh, pregnant people are so like mean and moody. But honestly, when I was pregnant, I thought that I was like way nicer than before I was pregnant in the first place. So I don't know if that's with everybody. I know everybody's a little bit different with their moods and emotions, but I thought that I was overall nicer when I whenever I was pregnant but that's just me personally but after being pregnant I know a lot of people go through like that postpartum depression for like a week or two and then you go to the doctor and talk with them and get help about that um I didn't really have that as much I know right after when I had the baby I would sit out in the living room at like two in the morning because she wouldn't sleep um, Addison is a really good sleeper. It took her about a month when she turned a month old Then she like slept throughout the night and she has ever since but before she was a month old She would wake up in the middle of the night every three hours to eat and I remember it was like 2 in the morning and I just couldn't sleep and neither would she so I laid out in my living room and just watched TV with her holding her and I would just sit out there and cry the whole time because I was just so sad. I like, I kept saying Kobe came out because he heard me crying and he was like what's wrong and I had no idea what was wrong. I just kept saying that I wanted to be back in the hospital having Addison again. Like, I don't even know why I felt like this. I just wanted to be back in that moment and feel... All the pain was so worth it and I just wanted to like feel all that again and see her in my arms for the first time. I just wanted that so bad so I was like so upset. But I eventually got over that. It probably took like three or four weeks after I had Addison for me to finally like realize like hey you aren't going back to the hospital like Addison's here now. Um, but after I got through that I thought like my I would be like way better but Whenever I'm driving by myself in the car, I will sit there and tear up over the weirdest things, like over just everything, like over me and Kobe, over Addison, like over happy things. It's never like a sad cry or any, it's never a sad cry. It's always happy tears and it's like usually when I'm driving by myself in the car and I'll just like get so emotional and I thought that was just like right after you had the baby but no, like Addison's almost a year old and I still am so emotional so that is another tip of advice, not really advice, just letting you guys know like I still get very emotional. I don't know if everybody does, but I am like so emotional, especially in the car by myself. I will just be driving and it just like, I think of something and then it hits me and I just like start crying like happy tears, like I'm so happy. Um, I'm glad it's not like a sad cry, but <laughs> yeah, that's just coming from me personally is that I'm still emotional, so you might still be a little bit emotional after you have the baby or for a really long time so I guess it just kind of depends on you okay my next little tip advice that I have for you guys I think this is like number six something like that but is how Addison sleeps I know that every mom makes their child sleep differently or dad however it is they all everybody sleeps different um, and I know that you're not supposed to have things in the crib when they're young because they can get SIDS and all that but um I like to parent a little bit differently so Addison, since she was about one month old, she has been sleeping throughout the night and she sleeps really well. She goes to bed whenever we put her to bed. So say if we go to bed at like 9 or 10 at night, she'll go to bed as well. Um, if we go to bed a little bit later, then she'll go to little, bed a little bit later. It just kind of depends when we put her down. Um, and then she normally wakes up in the morning around 8 a.m. or 9 a.m., sometimes even later. Some, she has slept until 11 a.m. sometimes and sometimes she has got up as early as 7 but I can't remember the last time she's gotten me up at like 6 or anything like that. So she is a really, really good baby, really good sleeper. But what I always do right before bed is um, I'll lay her down and put her usually in a dark room and then, which is her bedroom, but I'll always have the lights off and everything like that. And I'll give her a bottle and that bottle before bed just usually puts her to sleep. Um, I have told my friends that have babies, I've told them what I do at night and sometimes it doesn't help them. So this might not help you guys but um, it also might help you guys, so that's why I'm telling you. Um, and I know you're not supposed to have anything in the crib, but I always have a little stuffed animal in there for Addison because when she wakes up in the morning, usually she'll um, sometimes cry whenever I don't have anything in the crib with her. She will cry because she has nothing to do, nothing to play with. Um, but in the morning, sometimes I will wake up and she is literally just sitting in her crib by herself, 
playing, just doing nothing, playing, um, not crying. Usually when babies wake up, they cry and they want to get up and they want fed and everything. Um, Addison will just sit up in her crib either staring at something or playing with a little stuffed animal that I put in her crib the, the night before. So um, usually I will give her her bottle, put like a little stuffed animal in there with her and then she'll wake up in the morning, she'll see the stuffed animal or whatever, the toy that I put in there, whatever it is, and she will play with it and then usually um, keep herself occupied for a little bit longer so then you get a little bit more sleep. So that is a little tip on how to get a little more sleep. I know a lot of people don't want to put anything in the crib with them. Um, but that's just kind of how I do it. It keeps her more occupied. Okay, my last little tip that I have for you guys today is going to be about the food that they eat. Um, Addison, I started giving her jar food when she was about five months old. Sometimes before she was five months old, I would give her a little scoop of like mashed potatoes or something like that. Just like one scoop. Um, but she started eating solid foods um, when she was about five months old. We always just gave her the Gerber... Um, lids that you peel off and then fed it to her that way another tip of advice that I have that I found really helpful just recently um, Is the little pouches they make them in all different brands organic ones Gerber and just a bunch of different brands is the twist off lids So you can squeeze half the pouch um, Into a little bowl and feed it to them that way and then save the other half later or you could just squeeze out as much as you want and then, you know, save it for later. Instead of using the Gerber where you have to peel the lid off and then find another container to put the leftover in that they didn't eat and then put that in the fridge, I just think it's so much easier for the little twist caps um, to save it that way. So that way you don't got to use another container. Also, another good way is um, the brand that I have found. It's brand Beach Nut. I'm not sure if they have it everywhere. Um, and I'm sure other brands have this as well. But they come in a little glass jar um, of baby food. And I think the Beach Nut is organic. Um, but it comes in a little glass jar with a lid on it. And then all you have to do is pop the lid off. And then you can put put the lid back on whatever you don't use and then put that in the fridge. I just find that so much easier than going ahead and using half of the plastic jar and then putting that into a container and then putting it into the fridge and then taking the container out, washing the container. It's just so much work instead you could just use like the jar with the lid on it or the little plastic pouches. I think that's just so much easier. So that is all my little tips that I have for you guys today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, go ahead and like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Also comment down video ideas you would like to see from me and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.